Hi guys, it's me Arden Lee. I am back today with another video and today's video is about rejection. How do we handle rejection and allow it to, um, to actually inspire us rather than make us feel bad? Wow, wouldn't that be amazing could, if you could actually feel inspired? by a rejection, right? It's uh, it's not easy, but there is a way to get there. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit today about how to backwards engineer and uh, Jedi mind trick ourselves into understanding the gift behind a rejection. So I'm gonna unpack that a bit, but before I do, as always, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel and or uh, liked my page, I would love to invite you to do so. And if you're not yet familiar with me and my work, my name is Arden Lee and I'm the creator of The Repatterning Project, which is an eight week course dedicated to examining our patterns, hacking our beliefs and optimizing ourselves on the path to our success, our happiness, our enlightenment, our conscious awareness, our achievements, all the goals that we have in mind for ourselves. So if that sounds like something that is up your alley, go ahead and check out the description box to this video. Video where I have linked a free PDF guide download to the repatterning project so you can learn a little bit more about what it is that we do. And I've also linked to the repatterning parlor, which is the free Facebook group that I moderate full of like-minded individuals who are just waiting to help support you on your pathway to success. So come join us, say hi, and um, watch all of your dreams come true. <laughs> all right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, rejection. So I want to preface this talk by saying that I was the most rejection avoidant person I have ever met in my life <laughs> up until the last couple of years. I literally wrote a book when I was in my 20s called The New Rules of Attraction, which was uh, a, a guide for women on how to be able to uh, cultivate attraction with the men that they wanted to date. And all of that was designed to help me uh, raise my chances of being accepted uh, sexually and romantically rather than rejected. And uh, even though there was some value to, um, even though there was some value, there's certainly value to, you know, hacking the male gaze, you know, surviving in the patriarchy or, or whatever, you know, there's, there's great value to, uh, to walking into a room with confidence and being able to be that girl who can turn every head. That's really, really great. Um, my, uh, desire to avoid rejection actually kept me in a lot of toxic situations because I was with people who were really not compatible for me. I was with people who should have rejected me, who maybe couldn't handle me, wanted me to play small, wanted me to, you know, there were people that I, that I bent myself over backwards for, contorted myself into pretzels for, and didn't even get my needs met in relationship because I was doing all of these things to avoid rejection. So. Um, there's still plenty of useful information in the new rules of attraction if you are looking to uh, to build confidence, to know how to approach someone and have your best odds of building attraction with them. But for me, I sort of painted myself into a bit of a corner after I wrote the book because I thought to myself, I was like, oh wow, now I'm supposed to be that woman who can get any man she wants. So, because um, that's sort of the way that the media framed me uh, when after my book came out, uh, you know, with the with the PR that it was given, um, I was pitched as like this woman who could seduce any man in the world. And I was like, oh no, if I get rejected, that means I'm a fraud, you know, and um, and that's just not the case. So, so I want you to be able to view rejection as a gift because ultimately, if you're thinking about your ideal situation, now I'm talking mostly about relationships in this video, but this could also be in terms of jobs. It could be in terms of schools you're applying to, whatever it is. You want to be with someone who sees your worth, who values you, right? Who would never in a million years reject you. So it's understandable why you want to avoid rejection. However, the person who is going to be right for you is not going to be the person who is rejecting you, right? Does that make sense? So if someone rejects you, there's this phrase, rejection is redirection. If someone rejects you, it just tells you, it's just information that tells you, this is not a person who values me. This is not a person who sees my own worth 
and the value that I have to bring, or maybe they see it, but it's just not their cup of tea. You know, maybe they can see the value that I bring, but they're like, that's a different value than the value that I want in my life. I, you know, I'm looking for something different or, or whatever. So what you want is that fit. What you want is that match, right? You want that person who, who no matter what, no matter is going to love you unconditionally that that you're not going to have to contort yourself into all those pretzels just to get them to to not abandon you because you you know you can do that i certainly did that for many years you can just you you can just avoid anything that might rock the boat and you can stay in relationships for a really long time where you're just not bringing up anything that might be a source of conflict because the minute conflict happens, that person who had a mind to reject you in the first place is gonna use that as an excuse to reject you then. So you just keep avoiding any situations that you feel are going to result in rejection. And that is a recipe for a very, very, very miserable life, let me assure you. So I would love to offer you the reframe that experiencing rejection from someone is uh, is terrific because it tells you that they don't meet your standards wow that's a mind fuck huh that's a different reframe if someone is rejecting you they do not meet your standards for relationship do you understand what i'm saying by this if your standards for relationship are that someone loves you and desires you unconditionally and wants to be with you there through good times and bad and that there's practically nothing you could do short of murdering their kitten that would let them that would that would get them to to reject you in their life then someone who is rejecting you at the outset is telling you that they are not meeting your standards i had a reframe for myself when i was dealing with this issue and the way that i finally really was able to anchor this new belief into my body was that i reframed pain especially the pain of rejection or the pain of mistreatment in relationship as boring I used to think that pain was interesting and glamorous because happy endings all looked the same, but being in pain, being tortured and unrequited love, wow, that's the stuff that fuels art and songs and poetry and, and all of this stuff. And so I used to be in alignment with that. And, uh, and I finally decided one day that no, I've experienced all kinds of pain in relationship. I've experienced all kinds of rejection. I've experienced all kinds of unrequited love. And now anyone who is coming to my table and offering me more of that same experience is actually boring me. It's boring. I've been rejected. I've been hurt a bazillion times over. Show me something I haven't seen. What I haven't seen is someone who actually shows up for me, someone who shows integrity in their dealings and relationships, someone who is a clear communicator, someone who values me, someone who cherishes me, someone who nurtures me, someone who wants me to be happy to the extent that that is healthy for them to contribute to. Obviously, only I'm responsible for my own happiness, but you want to have a partner who also wants to contribute to your happiness too, who wants to co-create a life of happiness with you, right? Someone who cares when you're in pain, someone who cares when they're doing something that is crossing a boundary of yours or hurting you, who doesn't use that as an excuse to reject you outright on the spot or doesn't get defensive and say that it's actually your fault or say, well, what about the time that you did this? No, you want someone who's going to drop in with you and say, oh, wow, thank you for letting me know that. I would never in a million years hurt you intentionally. Let's solve this conflict together as a team, right? That is what you want. You want someone who values you. If someone is rejecting you, then they are showing you that they do not value you in the way that you have a standard for in your relationship. And that person does not meet your standards. That is the way that you turn this around. So if someone rejects you, you can say, wow, thank you so much for showing me early on that you don't possess the capacity or the right combination of characteristics to value me in the way that I want to be valued in relationship. Now, maybe you value me the way that I want to be valued in a friendship. Do I also value you the way that I want to value my friends? Maybe then we are just friends. Maybe that's cool then, right? If you have enough detachment at some point, you can actually get to that place, right? But thank you for letting me know that you do not meet my standards for being in a relationship with me. Because at the end of the day, our biggest standard for relationship should be that that person makes us feel loved and and contributes to our well-being to the well-being of the relationship that someone values us and cares about cares about how we feel right 
doesn't want to lose us from their lives. That's huge. So if someone rejects you outright, that is a gift. Oh my gosh. And it's really nothing about you. And, and what you'll find when you start doing this work is that when you start selecting for people who do value you, even if you start out in your friendships before you take it to your romantic relationships, is that you're going to start attuning yourself to attracting more and more people who value you in your life. And you're going to start to realize that when people reject you, it actually has nothing to do with you. It's just all about them and where they're at at the moment. It's not about you not measuring up to their standards. It's about you quite probably unconsciously selecting for people who are going to reject you because deep down, even though you say you want a relationship, there may be something that is keeping you from actually diving feet first into that. Um, that actually happened for me too, because I realized I was like, oh shit, I have a bunch of relationship trauma where, um, I, sh you know, the one, my one experience with cohabitation led to abuse. So for a long time, I believe that I selected for men who uh, who weren't going to be super serious about me because if I had to deal with actually moving in with someone, I was going to lose, first of all, like this amazing apartment that I love that I curated for myself, you know, to, to in a weird way, like making an apartment that I love so much that I don't want to leave was almost a way of inoculating myself against, um, you know, uh, against leaving it uh, to uh, to live with a partner. If I was going to be in a serious relationship, you know, then I would, that was probably, that's probably the end game there. So I kept choosing a lot of people who either rejected me or keep or kept me at that emotionally unavailable distance that we so often hear about. So the way that I, uh, the way that I tackled that for myself is I started to visualize a home with a partner that I love even more than my apartment that I would be willing to leave my apartment for. But because, because of that, it has to be that good, right? It has to be that good to get me to, to leave my situation that I, that I love currently. Now I view it not as an inoculation against serious commitments, but I view it more as the standard that must be exceeded for me to be able to, uh, to feel inspired to leave my single life, right? That means it's now a standard. It's no longer a wall that I've built. It's a standard that must be met. So have your standards and your number one standard should be that someone doesn't reject you at the outset. And if someone rejects you at the outset or even, you know, however many months or weeks in or whatever, then that person doesn't meet your standards for a relationship. That's how you call your power back. And you start selecting for the people who are actually going to be good for you. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.